Come and get prayer when you need prayer. Amen? <laughs> That's how things happen. It's been, it's, it's really amazing. Like, I've just, to be dead honest, like, I've, I've seen answered prayer before, obviously. But can I tell you that I have never seen answered prayer like God answers in this church? <laughs> I mean, I, I say that with all honesty. Like, I have seen God move more strongly in this church than I have in all my 30 years of ministry. Um, 35. And so, anyway, it's exciting. So let's pray together, right? So today we're, I'm going to do part two of going through the wasteland. Part two, right? Y'all ever feel like just things just never grow, they're just not going right. And no matter what happens and you feel alone and you feel abandoned and you feel like everything is just desert and desolate and that it's just that things can't grow and that nothing's happening in your life. And we talked a little bit about that and I talked about how um, that God still works even in the midst of the night, of the wasteland. And can I just tell you that God works the night shift. God works the night shift. So when everything looks dark and dreary and terrible, God is doing his most great work. He is working even when we don't see it with our eyes, even when we don't know what he's doing. God is working through everything. But today I'm going to be talking about tips and tri tricks or as... Um, as uh, Nick told me on Thursday, he's like, God's cheat codes. <laughs> and I was like, that's it. I'm adding that to my sermon. <laughs> right? So we're going to learn about God's cheat codes today. Like, what do you do when everything looks terrible and it just doesn't look like it's ever going to end and you feel alone and you feel like it's dark and it's horrible, right? So we're going to learn about God's cheat codes today. Um, but don't confuse your path with your destination. Just because it's stormy now doesn't mean that you aren't headed for sunshine. Have you ever been in Texas and one side of the street is rainy and the other side is clear? All right, that's what happens in our life. It looks like there's never going to be an end to that storm. And then all of a sudden, boom, the clouds clear and everything comes clear. That's what God is going to do in our life. Sometimes it takes longer than we want, but it will become clear. Amen? All right, and then... Um, Josue, well, going through the wasteland, you can either strengthen you or weaken you, but you have to go through. And I, you, I know that um, Josue spoke um, today about if you're going through the tunnel, God is with you and he's going to light your way before you. But here, I want to tell you the story behind that, all right? Because on Thursday, we were here at practice. And can I just tell you that it was a powerful practice. And I'm very proud of these young people. And anyway, so we were praying and we're just literally, we're practicing hearing from God. Because guess what? It takes practice. Right? And so we were practicing hearing from God. And, and, and can I just tell you that Zach and Josue had this time with God that was incredible. I came up, they're both like, you know, well, they're both kind of choking up and, you know, getting teary. And, and they're like, and I'm like, well, what did God say? And Josue came up with the word that you heard today. And I'm like, I'm putting that in my sermon. <laughs> because that's what God's going to do. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel. It might look like a little teeny pinprick and you can't even see it, but you keep on going and you will get through because God will never leave you. He will never forsake you and he will light your way. Amen? But God is speaking and God is with us and he wants to communicate with his people, right? And God is going to get us through. Whatever hard time you're going through, God's going to get you through, right? Um, I'm going to shout out to Lori. She, I, I, I stole this from her today or the other day. Whenever it was, you will either quit or keep going. They both hurt. <laughs> Read that again. So look, it's going to hurt. Like, life hurts, guys. Right? If you quit, it hurts. If you keep going, it hurts. But guess which one's the better one? If you keep going, you will eventually get to the other side. You'll eventually get to the light. So keep going. Yes, it hurts. I know it hurts. But get up. Keep going. Keep going. Because God will get you through to the other side. So don't quit because somebody is praying for you. And you will make it through. And like I said, I have seen God answer prayers in this church all over my life, but particularly in this church. So don't quit. Somebody is praying for you. And then actually, I showed this to the worship team on Thursday as well. And Joel Osteen, there was a, he actually has a, I don't know, I don't know, reel or something. Anyway, and he's like, don't just go through it, grow through it. So whatever you're going through, don't just go through it which is awesome, just get to the other side, but grow through it. But I want to clarify something. That does not mean that God has ever sent like horrible things in your situation in order for you to grow. Just God in his mercy, though bad things happen and life happens, he allows us to grow through that because he's not going to waste something and he's going to bring good out of what Satan meant for evil. 
But I want to be clear. God is not the one that brings the hard things at Satan. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God has come to save us and give us life and life more abundantly. So, but while we're going through that stuff, let God grow you through it. Because you're going to hear God with an ear that you've never heard before. And when you've, when you've walked through hard times with God and he's, you realize that the other side, like my mom, when you get to the other side, you're like, you know, yes, I went through a horrible times and I've been her daughter, so I, trust me, it has not been this charmed life. She's gone through really hard times. Ask her about the firing squad she faced, just saying. All right, so there's hard things that we go through, but you get to the other side and you're like, you know what, God never left me. God is with me, and God is going to do that with everything that you are going through. Whatever that hard thing is in front of you, God is going to get you through it. I'm saying let God grow you. Let him grow you through it. Let your faith grow. Step out in faith. When you, you think that you heard the Holy Spirit, step out. Even if you're wrong, he can guide and correct that. But when he knows that you're following him, he will guide you, and you will be rewarded for that. But grow through that. Apply the things. Uh, and can I just say so? I'm going to invite our Sarah. Shout out to Sarah. Every time I teach her a lesson, she applies it that week. Look, just the proof this week. We've talked about hurl the net Sunday. She's bringing in. She's reeling in that fish, right? So here's what I got to say. You want to grow? Apply. Every time you grasp one little bit of truth, apply that. Apply that. No matter how little. Even if I, you heard an hour and you got one second's worth of truth, apply that one second's worth of truth and you will grow exponentially. So even as you're going through that dark time, if all you heard today is like, you know what, God's not going to leave me, apply that. So when you feel alone and it feels like your prayers are going nowhere, they're bouncing, go, you know what, nah, I, I learned one thing today. God's with me. He's not going to leave me. So no matter what I feel like, I'm going to hold on to the fact that God's with me. Can you imagine just, just that one little thing? There's power. There's power. So keep going. All right. And with that, don't overthink stuff. All right. We all do it. Some of us are worse than others, but we all do it, right? The, and can I just tell you, the what ifs and the how comes are going to kill you. So stop it. Just, let's just stop it. Let me just put it there. All right? The what ifs and the how comes, they will kill you. They will stop you from going through to the other side. So just leave it behind. You know what, God? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to trust you that you are a good God. And even if a bad thing happens, you're going to manage to get me through. Amen? So you just leave it. It does not matter if it's good or bad. Guess what? God's going to be there with you. So we've got to leave it in his hands. Guess what? We don't know the future. Nine times out of ten, what we worry about doesn't even happen, and I know that from experience, okay, from me, right? Most of the time, it doesn't happen, but if it does, your worrying didn't stop it, because if that's the case, can I just tell you, like, I could have stopped, like, the whole world from, like, spinning, like, if that worked, all right? Because if you're going to, if our worrying doesn't change the future, the only thing that will get us through is God. And we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. And God will get us through. So forget trying to figure it out. Forget trying to do all that. If all that worrying in the world is not going to get us through, so just trust God and stop overthinking. And I like it. Reminders of overthinking. So making mistakes is part of life. Let me just say, okay, I am a perfectionist, right? I don't, and I like to do the right thing. I'm a rule follower. I love the Con opposite of Pastor Martin, right? He hates rules. I love rules, right? But making mistakes is part of life. I have had to learn this. Here's what I got to say. We are going to make mistakes. You're going to think you heard God and you didn't. You're going to step out in faith and you're going to fall. You're going to do this thing. You're going to do that thing. You're going to try this job, think it's the great job, find out it's terrible, right? That's life. So stop going, you know what? God's right there, as I told you. He, he just comes and picks us up. So when you mis make a mistake, just be like, oh, I was a little baby and I fell down today. God's going to pick me up. It's okay. The world does not stop because we made a mistake. And God's power is not stopped because we made a mistake. God is going to get us through. Right? Your thoughts and fears are not facts. I know they feel like it. Trust me. I'm there too. I know that when we feel things and, we, and, we, and we're afraid of things, that it feels so real. But that does not mean it's fact. Just because you think that somebody doesn't like you doesn't mean they don't. Just because you think that this thing is so doesn't mean it's true. Right? I, I've told this story before, but we were laughing at a baseball game, and it was because I know baseball, and my husband does not. 
and <laughs> we were watching the kids, right? <laughs> and and he's making like these ridiculous comments. I love my husband. He is a brilliant man. He knows like all these languages, all these things, but sports. <laughs> so one of my sons, I don't even remember which one of them, but one of my sons gets up and he's like, t- they, they, you know, they, they, um, they came through and they, they uh, did a run, right? And he's like, touchdown! And I'm like, oh, right? <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Josue, for demonstrating. He's like, yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, touchdown! And then uh, my, uh, one of my sons, uh, the other one, got, he was, he's left-handed, and so he got hit by the pitch. It happened a lot when he was a kid. And he's like, how did he get on base? And I'm like, he took one for the team, you know. But anyway, but we are like dying laughing over this, because my husband is just making these comments, and we're just like, oh my goodness, like he has no idea, right? But the other team, unfortunately for them, they were losing, so they thought we were making fun of them. So they thought we were, so they felt bad, right? And they were convinced, so in their head, what they were feeling was true, but what we're doing, we're actually making fun of my husband, not that team. So just because we feel something doesn't make it true. Right? So don't rely on them. Acknowledge your feelings. Don't stuff them down. That's bad. They come pop back out at really inconvenient times, and it's very, very bad. Ask me how I know. All right? But so we, don't, we acknowledge them, we feel them, and then we release them back to God. Right? Acknowledge them, feel them, release. We don't dwell there. Right? And don't believe them as fact. Just because you are sad today doesn't mean that you weren't going to be happy tomorrow. All right? All you can control is the present moment. We have no control over the future. It's like you could drop dead tomorrow, something, you could win the lottery, like, right? We don't know what's going to happen. We can only control right now what our actions are. So that's what we focus on. These racing thoughts will not last forever. Anybody else have these thoughts that go, right? And then your heart's pounding. It's like this adrenaline and you can't shut it off, right? It's hard, right? That's not going to last forever. Even if you spend an a sleepless night, the next day it's going to stop. Everything looks better in the morning, right? Isn't that weird? Like all night, like it looks terrible, and then it gets there. But those racing thoughts, you have to just, just tell yourself, you know, it's not going to last. And tell those thoughts to stop. Now, I'm aware that they're probably not going to stop right away, all right? But you keep speaking to those thoughts, and you keep subjecting them, putting them under your feet, and you keep replacing them with a good thing. So that thought comes on, you are such a failure, you're this, you're that. Replace it with, nah, I am more than conquer. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the apple of God's eye. And you replace the whatever bad thought is going through your mind with the good. When you're, th- you're afraid about the future and you're like, oh my goodness, all these bad things are going to happen. You're, nope, God said that he has given me a future and a hope. And you replace it and replace it. Initially, you're not going to believe it. It's okay. Keep saying it. Eventually, your heart will catch up. All right? You're doing the best you can, and it's enough. I had to learn this the hard way. Can I just tell you that I finally had to get to the point where it's okay not to be okay? Because I was like, I have to look like I've got it together all the time. Guess what? You don't. All right? You're doing the best. All God asks is our heart. All he's wanting us is to, like, try to follow him, right? He wants us to love him, to accept him, to receive him. You're doing the best you can, and it is enough. Because he's going to tell you, it's not about you guys anyway. It's not about me. It's about God and what he's done. So stop focusing. We have to stop focusing on ourselves and focus on Christ, and then he will get us through. Right? Things can work out better than you think. Okay, I had to learn that one. Oh, my goodness, I'm still working on it. But, okay, I love Winnie the Pooh. If you, I have a bunch of Winnie the Pooh stuff. My family says I can't have any anymore because I have to try to be like Tigger. But I love Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I love Winnie the Pooh, right? He's always, he's like, good morning, if it is a good morning, right? <laughs> and y'all need to know that that is my true nature. What you see, nah, that's my true nature. That's, I wake up in the, and if, okay, if you are one of my kids or my husband or my, my mom or some of the people that have lived with us, you will know that I am not super pleasant to be around in the morning, that you need to let me chill and don't even think about talking to me until I've had my tea, <laughs> All right, because I am not a morning person, right? So, um, so I'm telling you. So, my initial, and I've gotten better over the years. Like the last, I don't know, ten years or so, I've gotten way better. But can I just tell you, historically, if something happens, I extrapolate, and I have thought the worst scenario possible. So, if I have a paper cut, by the end of the day, I've got gangrene. 
<laughs> <All right? laughs> if my kid cheated on a test, the next that they're you know <laughs> they're in jail and on drugs, all right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I go to like the extreme, right, of what's going on, and like God's like most of the time that's not gonna happen, and if it does, God is there, right? Because me worrying about it didn't stop them, right? And and they made it through, right? So things can work out better than you think. And so, yes, it might not work out, but it might. And if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. God has another plan. So we've got to stop that overthinking. And I stole this one from Ruby. Um, When life puts you in tough situations, don't say, why me? Say, try me. Because here's what i got to tell you. Actually, it kind of is appropriate, right? We sang the lion song, the lion and the lamb today. I'm telling you, the the worship team was like here in the Holy Spirit this week. That's all I got to say. But don't say why me. So I told you that the what ifs and the, you know, is going to kill you. So will the why me's. We spend, and again, if you, we all ask, all right? We all say, why is this me? Right? We all do it. So no condemnation. Let me just say that. I've done it too. But I'm saying and we stay there, why me? Why me? We are going to sink and we're going to drown. Instead, we're like, you know what? Try me. I've got the living God inside of me and I'm going to make it through. I have the living God inside of me. If you have accepted Christ, you have the living God inside of you. And all the power of the resurrection is in you. You have a lion inside of those lungs, like we sang today, right? So let that lion roar. Because we have a lion inside of us, right? Got it. I forgot who I stole this one from, but I stole it from one of y'all. If Satan can talk angels out of heaven, he can talk you into hell. Be mindful what voices you listen to. Satan lies to us all the time. The problem is, is that we listen to him instead of God. So why do we do that? Like, seriously, like, Satan believes God more than we do. Like, he knows what God's doing. He believes what God says. And he literally believes in God more than we do. So stop listening to the devil. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Let God speak to you, and he will get you through. Because in Philippians 4, 8, it's some of you all friends, I'd say that you do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious. The best, not the worst. Right? The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. That's what God wants to do. So we've got to stop the overthinking. We've got to stop all those negative thoughts. It says, by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious. But here's the problem. We fill our minds with the negative, the terrible, the worst case scenario, the, 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 the right? And we fill our minds with that. And then God's trying to peek through. And then we wonder why we're having a hard time hearing him. We've got to clear our mind out and be like, nah, because here's the deal. God doesn't have control of your mind. You do. I do. It's our job to control our mind, and then God will answer us, right? I said, whatever is right, whatever is confirmed by God's word. Are those terrible things you're imagining, are those confirmed by God's word? Nah. So throw them out. When they come in, toss them, right? We need to be better, like, instead of garbage collectors, we need to be, um, what do you throw it? Like, we throw them away, right? We need to throw garbage, not collect it, right? We need to do that. And whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace. If something's not bringing you peace, it's not God. Pure and simple. So think on the things that bring you peace. If something you're thinking about is not bringing you peace, stop thinking about it. Hand it to God. He's the only one that will do it. All right? If there's anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. So that's what we're to focus our attention on. Not the news, not the media, not all the bad things that are happening in the world, because there's always something bad happening in the world. Right? Not on the stuff that's going wrong in our life. Not on our emotions. We focus on Jesus and Jesus alone. We focus on the good things. Even in the midst of trials, we look for where God is moving in in those things because God is always in the helpers, right? So look for where God is moving in those things to come and rescue. Think continually on these things. It says center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Center our mind. We are to center our mind on those good things, not the bad things that are all around us. It's so easy. And the world's always shouting at us and throwing us all the icky things, but center our mind on the good things. Center your mind on Christ. Because 
The only thing that's in our control is walking by faith, what I focus on, believing God's word, the arrest that we do, loving people, bold prayer, my actions, taking my thoughts captive. What's out of my control is God's timing. Do you know he has timing? It's never mine. Let me just give you a hint. Like, never mine. Changing people, we can't do that. We can't, out of control is our outcomes. Out of control is our past. It already happened, right? Other people's actions, out of our control. People's perception of me, we can't control that either. When growth happens or the future, but we can control our thoughts. Our battlefield is in our mind. And in Matthew 6, 11, and all the rest of that, it's Matthew 6. It says, give us this day our daily bread. It's our daily bread. God wants to answer us daily. He doesn't answer us weekly. He doesn't answer us monthly. He doesn't answer us yearly. He answers us daily. He says he will give us our daily bread. All right? It says stop being worried or anxious. And I, I, the Amplified calls that uh, perpetually uneasy and distracted. Anybody else do that besides me? <laughs> that we get perpetually uneasy and distracted. It says stop doing that. Stop worrying about your life because is life not more than food, right? Is life not more than clothing? Those things are really not important in this kingdom. What's, what's important is God and his kingdom, right? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, and they gather into the barns, but the ha- heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Aren't they worth more than you? If God takes care of the birds, isn't he going to take care of you? Right? He's going to take care of us. And it says, first and foremost, seek him. And it says here, aim at, strive, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness. It's his righteousness, not our righteousness. We strive after that. Figure out that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You're not righteous in and of yourself. You were righteous because of what God did for you. And so do not worry for tomorrow, for tomorrow tomorrow will worry about itself. Because worrying is a total waste of time. It doesn't change anything, and it messes with your mind and steals your happiness. Can I just tell you that's what happens? And there's a story in Kings. For sake of time, I'm not going to go into it. It's 2 Kings chapter 6. If you want to read the story, it's a really cool one. But Elisha's uh, servant freaks out because they are surrounded by this army. And he's like, what are we going to do? And he is freaking out. He's having a panic attack. He's flipping out. And he's like, Elisha, Elisha, what are we going to do? And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around. God is fighting for you even when you don't see it. Ask God to show you. But God is fighting. There are angels that fight on our behalf. God is pouring out his grace to you, right? Let him do that, right? He's going to do that. And to be honest, I, I don't remember what this is about, but it, in honor of the Star Wars week that we've had, right? So sometimes the enemy looks bigger than you can handle, but he's a deceiver. It's all mirrors. And it looks like it's big, but it's, you know how a mirror, it like things, well, that's the enemy's trick. He makes himself look big. And so we're fooled. It's just a mirror trick. God is bigger. He's the Lion of Judah, right? And he's the lamb that was sacrificed. It's all smoke and mirrors. He's just trying to make himself look big. Ignore it. Right? In Psalm 40, verse 1 through 3, and it's the Passion Translation, it says, I waited and waited and waited. Some more. Anybody else feel like that? <laughs> They're like, I waited and I waited and I waited. Right? I felt like I waited forever for Pastor Martin. It wasn't that long, but I did patiently, knowing God would come through for me. Then at last he bent down and listened to my cry. He stooped down to lift me out of danger, right? From the desolate pit I was in, out of the muddy mess I had fallen into. Don't we, sometimes it's other people's muddy mess, and sometimes it's our own. But guess what? God rescues us out of them, all right? Now he's lifted me up into a firm, secure place and steadied me while I walk along his ascending path. Hold his hand. He's going to steady you. He's not going to let you fall, right? A new song for a new day rises up in me every time I think about how he breaks through for me. Ecstatic praise pours out of my mouth until everyone hears how God has set you free, has set me free. Many will see his miracles. They'll stand in awe of God and fall in love with him. If you just hang on to God's hand and let him pull you out of the pit, you will have a story to tell somebody that will bless somebody else. Just he's going to use your story. No matter how icky, no matter how messy and miry, God is going to pull you out of that mess. He's going to clean you up, and then you are going to be a story that will encourage someone else. 
2 Corinthians 4, 16, 17. It says, that's why we never give up. But through our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Like, I know it feels long. And even if we struggle for things, like I, t- I told you, like, um, Basically, like Abraham and Sarah, they waited like 75 years, right, or whatever it was. And it seems long to us, but in light of eternity, it's short. And if we can just make it through, even if our prayer isn't answered here, we will get to heaven and all our tears will be wiped away and it will be made right. Okay, and I was going to bring in like a big string and a big garden hose for something else I was going to do, but it was dirty, so I didn't. So yeah, I get my straw, Okay. But just pretend this keeps going on. Just imagine it just goes on and on and on. And it's eternity. Right? So if this was eternity, like this little teeny piece right here, that's our life. We just got to get through his. And then the rest of our eternity, we get to spend in glory with God. Feeling his love and his kindness. His mercy. Right? So he's got that. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside where God is making new life. So even when it looks dead on the outside, when everything around you looks terrible and dead and desolate, God is bringing new life inside of you. He's planting seeds and they are growing. Not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times, I like it, are small potatoes. This is the message compared to the coming good times. Small potatoes, right? The lavish celebration prepared for this is more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today and gone tomorrow, but the things we can't see now will last forever. The things of God's kingdom will last forever, and he's going to get us through. Amen? Right? And so our adventure with God is even in the hardest times can still be an adventure, and we can still find joy in the midst of it. But I have to tell you, so in Isaiah 50, but verse 11, it says, But watch out, you who live in your own light and warm yourselves by your own fires. And really, it's just talking about we cannot do this ourselves. So many times we rely on ourselves and not God. This is not a time to rely on ourselves because we will fail. Actually, like if you look in the Bible, anytime somebody was like, God, I'm not going to fail you, guess what's the next thing they did? <laughs> they tripped and fell, right? Peter's like, I will not deny you. I will even die for you. And he denied him three times to a little girl. <laughs> All right? So it's not about us. It is about God and let God move for you. And it is his grace, all right? And here's where my, my, my hose came in that I don't have because I didn't want to get dirty. I'm confessing my, my vainness before you, right? But God has a hose, and he's like pouring like that water of grace into our life, and it's just flooding, just coming and coming and coming. Like the tap is on, and it is pouring. But when we try to do it ourselves, we smoosh that, and we kink it. What happens when we have a hose and it's kinked? Nothing comes out. Now, the water's still flowing, right? Water is still flowing. Guess what? God's grace is still flowing. But when we were like, ah, God, I got it, this is what happens to our hose. God's still trying to pour out. We are not accessing his grace because we are not allowing it to come. We are hanging on and we're like, I got this, God. Here I've got to tell you, every time we say, I've got this, we don't got this. <laughs> All right? So don't kink your hose. God wants his water of grace to flow freely into our life. All right? So depend on God, not on that. All right? Uh, there's Peter. So 1 Peter 5.5, 5, it says, In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. God gives grace to us when we are um, humble towards him. When we are kinking our hose, when we're like, I got this, or I'm, when we're looking to like, meet God, like, I'm going to prove to you how much I love you, God. All we're doing is being prideful. And we're saying, we got this. We didn't need you, Jesus. We didn't need your cross, right? So we need to humble ourselves and let God move. In verse 7, it says, Humble yourselves into the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. All of your cares. I just want to point out, it says, Set aside self-righteous pride. That's what that means. So all those things where you're like, I'm better than they are. I've got this. Or I need to do this in order for God to be pleased with me. I need to do it this way for order for God to be happy with me. Throw all that away and be like, I need your, 
you, God. I cannot do this. I cannot accomplish this. I cannot overcome what's in front of me without you. And then God's grace will flow. Right? And all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, cast them on them. Because he watches over you very carefully. It's a here. If you bow low in God's presence, if you bow low in God's presence, as you leave the timing in his hands, right? You have to leave the timing there. It says, pour out all your worries and stress upon him. Another translation says, load up all your worries. He is strong enough to carry every worry and concern that you have. We are not, and we will drop them, all right? Your anxiety is lying to you. You are loved, and you're going to be okay, right? Trust me, you're going to be okay. It feels really terrible and like you're going to die. I know that, but you're going to be okay. You just got to get to the other side. Corey Ten Boom, who spent a lot of times in the concentration camp, says, worrying is carrying tomorrow's load with today's strength, carrying two days at once. It's moving into tomorrow ahead of time. Worrying does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. You're making yourself weak by worrying about the future. Worry about today. God's got the future. And here it says, 1 Peter 5.8, it says, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, because he likes to pretend he's God, right? He tries to devour, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Can I tell you that God is, sorry, that God is with us, but Satan is running around prowling after us, and he wants us. You know what he's looking for? He's looking for isolated people that have separated from the flock, that are wounded, and, and he's going to go after them, right? So we've got to do things to not be taken, right? As a group, we are much more powerful than alone, so we've got to stay in community, right? Like those young people demonstrated, right, at the, and my mom all the generations together helping each other because this is where we're strong. When we go off and go isolated, that's when problems happen. And Satan's like, oh, you're easy prey. And then goes and attacks, right? He's going after the easy ones, right? Let's pull this down. So if we stick together, it is harder for him to get us. And even when he starts to attack us, the rest of us gather around and we protect and we help and we lift you up. You're like, ah, we'll fix you, right? And remember, like I said, I got to get our cone on, like the little doggy or the little kitty. Because like, animals, when they get hurt, they want to go lick themselves, and they end up making it all worse, bleeding, and this, and that's one of the things that happened with Zach's cat that he prayed for, right? And so here's what I got to tell you. We don't have cones as humans, but we ought to. Because we do the same thing. We run and hide, and we isolate ourselves when we feel bad. I'm telling you, put your cone on. But you know what your cone is? Church. Community. That's what's going to keep us because when we come here and we are surrounded by people, they're going to stop you licking your arm to death or your leg to death or whatever sore that is. And they're going to encourage you and strengthen you, right? So we got to put our cone on, right? So here's what I got to tell you. When you are at your lowest, that's when you come to church. When you are really having a hard time, get yourself to church. Go find some like-minded believers. Go find your friends. Go find your community and get your cone on. Because otherwise, we're going to crawl in a hole, and we're going to let Satan lie to us, and we're going to make things worse. All right? Here's what I got to tell you. Even when it's sickness. Okay, I'm not telling you all to come to church if you're contagious. But y'all have those days when you don't feel well, and you're just like, I'm tired, and I don't want to go. That's when you go. You drag yourself here by your whatever. Like you drag yourself here. If you have to crawl on your hands and knees, get yourself to church. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Everybody I know that's done that has felt better by the end of service. Every single person that has ever done that has felt better at the end of service, right? I, 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 somebody told me, they're like, you know what? I'm in a lot of pain, but I can be at pain at home or I can be at pain at church. And then while I'm at church, the pain's going to go away because my mind will be on something else. When we isolate, all we think about is the pain that we're going through. Bring it here. Because guess what? While you're here around people and you're going to be focused on other things, that pain and suffering's going to like go down a little bit, right? And we're going to feel better. So I'm telling you, don't neglect to coming to church. The other thing, let me just say, so right before we took over this church, I was literally in bed 20 days out of 30. It might have been more than that. I am being generously, like, conservative with my numbers. I had vertigo. It was horrible. I could barely function. We're about to take over the church. We're supposed to be splitting the thing. And with a series of events, 
and it, I really felt like, you know, God's like, stand and fight. Stand and fight. And can I just tell you that for most of us, like, I think it goes with my, what my mom said today. Like, I said, thanks for preaching my message. <laughs> right? And um, stand and fight. Because the enemy attacks us with sickness and sorrow and discouragement and our emotions. That's where he goes. He goes to make us, if he can't make us sick, he's going to make us depressed. All right? Or whatever else. Like, that's where he's going after us. So don't let him win. And, God, uh, and Satan has been after my health since, uh, probably since I was born, all right? Like, 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 I don't remember a time in my life that, that Satan didn't attack my health. But here's what I have learned. Stand and fight. So when I have felt terrible, I have dragged myself to church, and God has met me. And can I tell you that there was many times that I dragged myself, and I was dizzy. Now, now there were times I couldn't even get out of bed, so... I'm saying, sometimes we can't, right? Like, you're in the hospital, watch us online, all right? But I'm talking about those times when you can, but you just don't want to because you feel so bad, right? And I'm feeling sick, the last thing, and I'm like, nah, I'm going to. And I've literally, like, popped five billion pills. Okay, not five billion, but I've popped, like, pill after pill going, I got to get this through. And I've literally been, the room is spinning, and I've gotten up to preach. And I'm like, how am I even going to, like, not fall off the stage, God? But the second I got up on stage and started preaching, boom, the dizziness gone. Sometimes it stayed gone, and sometimes the second I stepped off, it was back. But I was not going to let Satan win, and I'm done with letting him win. Amen? And so I'm telling you, if, the, if when you feel like you don't want to come to church because you are tired, get to church. I, if you have only had one hour of sleep, get to church. If you need to sleep, take another time. Because here's what I'm going to tell you. This is where you get your strength. Here's where we gather together. You will have people around you that will, that will stand to get you. They will lift your hands. That will warm you, right? And I'm not talking about this legalistic thing that you're in trouble and God loves you and there's no condemnation. All of that, right? So I'm not saying that you're bad and evil if, if we're not here. But here's what i got to tell us. There is strength in numbers. There is strength in numbers. And if we allow and if we push through those terrible times and we're like, I don't want to get out of bed, if we push through, I am telling you that there's going to be answered prayers again. I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten texts and people said, I, I'm, don't, I'm not feeling well or I'm not up to it, I'm having a bad day. And guess what? Whatever was spoken in the message was something that would have spoken to them and they missed it and they weren't here. Or how many times somebody else showed up and like, oh, that would have been so perfect to mix them together, and they would have blessed each other, and they missed it. Can I tell you that if we are not here, you're missing it. If you're a young adult, and you're not at the young adults, you're missing it, right? And again, God loves us. No condemnation. I am trying to tell you that there is strength. We don't remember, we don't know how much strength we get here, right? When there is a, a piece of coal in, you know, in a fire, all the little coals are burning, right? Little embers are burning. It's a big fire, right? But what happens if you take one of them out? That, that one that you take out and isolate, it dies. The fire goes out. We need each other to keep the fire going. So when your fire is dwindling, come get with the other embers and rub up against them, right? <laughs> and be like, all right, let's get together. Let's get this fire burning, right? Because God wants to give us strength, right? And it doesn't matter how strength, even when we are weak, God is strong, right? So in Second Corinthians, so I'm well pleased with weakness, with insults, with distress, with persecutions, with difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak in human strength, then I am strong, truly able, truly powerful, truly drawing from God's strength. When you feel weak, then you are the prime example for God's power to shine. When we're strong, God's not getting the glory. But when we're weak and we allow God to move, that is a powerful move of God, and you are a walking testimony of him. Right? My grace is enough. It's all you need. And it was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weakness. So whenever we feel weak, you should be, we should rejoice and be like, you know what? Then this is God's opportunity to move in, and he can show his strongness with us. Right? The weaker I get, the stronger I become. So we don't have to be afraid that we don't have it all together. We don't have to worry about those things. God is strong when we are weak. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Right? God has good plans for us. His plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for, right? His plans for peace and well-being. But here's what I want to tell you. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. 
And this comforting verse that we have here is from the weeping prophet. He was always crying. He was trying to, he was, he was sad because uh, Judah wasn't turning. They weren't listening to him. And, and he's trying to call, call them to repentance, and they wouldn't repent. He, he didn't have children. He didn't have um, a wife. He's lonely. He's feeling abandoned. He's feeling rejected. And he's feeling like he's speaking. He's following what God's telling him to do, and nothing's happening. And we get this verse from him. So when you are going through dark times, remember, just like Jeremiah, that God has good plans for us, right? And that same Jeremiah, he says that, Lord, if you heal me, I will be truly healed. If you see, save me, I will be truly saved. My praises are for you alone. God, pick up the pieces, put me back together again. You are my praise. So the weeping prophet gave praise to God in the midst of our sorrow. Can I tell you that there is power when we praise God in the midst of our sorrow? In the midst of that wasteland, when we stand and be like, you know what, Satan, you have thrown everything against me, but I am going to worship my God. You have no idea what power that brings. There is power in worship. And there's even more power in corporate worship. So when we stand together and we're like, whew, there is a power that comes. You feel low, start worshiping God. Because God will be there and it will be warfare. Be like a little child. These are both of my girls. Aren't they cute? <laughs> I tried to find one with Zach, but he escaped this week. I couldn't find one. But he, <laughs> but he, I have, he, he, he would just stand and hold his hands and worship about that same age and just, it was awesome. Micah too. And so let's be like little children in worship. Whether we're happy, whether we're sad, whether we're nah, right? Worship. Let God move, right? Let God move. Because little kids, they lift their hands carry me when they're having a hard time, when they're not having a hard time, carry me. My little granddaughter is always asking me, Grandma, hold me, pick me up, carry me, right? And, and what does Grandma do? She picks her up. She's probably going to break my back one day, but it's all right because it's my grandkid, right? <laughs> but here's what I'm going to say. But little kids, but here's what I got to tell you. When we worship, when we lift our hands to God like this, we are saying, carry me, God. And we're saying, I am weak, but you are strong. I need you to carry me. This is what worship is, is being a little kid going, hold me, Daddy. Hold me, Daddy. I need you to carry me. This life is hard. I'm not going to get through it. I need you to carry me. And no matter how big we are, because like, there's going to be a time I can't pick up my grandkid, but you can be 150, and God's still going to pick you up. But we have to be humble enough to be like, Daddy, I need you. Daddy, I need you. I can't do this. I'm going to fail. But I'll, I'll win if you carry me. Have you ever seen a little kid walk on Daddy or Grandma or Grandpa's feet, right? Okay, that's what God wants for us. He, he'll walk with us, but we have to be like, Daddy, carry me. I need you. This, that is worship. And that is where power is. And actually, it was, it was awesome today. When Josue asked you guys to, everybody to lift their hands. And I looked across, and, and all these people had their hands raised. And there was something that changed in the atmosphere today. And I don't know if you felt it, but there was something that happened today. And I'm telling you, when we raise our hands and we're like, Daddy, God, there is a power that will come into our lives, individually and corporately. So really quick, I'm going to end here with just really quick. But things to do. Worship, like I said. Go to church. Get your cone on, right? Like I already talked about that. Get prayed for. So when we call for people for prayer, come forward, right? Come afterwards. Help and reach out to others. Can I tell you that when we, when we try to help others and our focus gets off ourselves and we end up feeling better, so the best antidote for when you're feeling like garbage is to go help somebody else. And you will find that you, you actually feel better. Um, reach out to others. And can you, a lot of times we have this little voice and we're like, I don't know if that's God or not. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Act on it. Because you, oftentimes God uses those little promptings. And they feel natural to us, but they are supernatural. All right? So a couple weeks ago, I was like, um, I was missing my friend. I, I think it's because I preached about her. I preached about my friend. And I'm like, oh, I miss my friend. So I called my friend in, in, in Utah. And I just wanted to hear her voice. And that's all. 
uh, really, that's all I had in mind, right? Turns out that she's been put on six weeks bed rest because of long COVID and a concussion-like syndrome. And I was like, oh, now I know why I wanted to call you. I thought I just missed my friend. But God had laid her on my heart so that I could pray for her and encourage her. And she knew she wasn't alone because she can't get out of bed. She's not allowed to read. Read. What do you do? Crystal, what do you do if you can't read? Like, she's not allowed to read. I don't know how you live, right? She can't watch TV. No internet. Like, what do you do? Right? But here's what I'm saying. God just laid it on my heart. Call your friend. I didn't know it was God. I thought I was just being like, I miss my friend. So whatever promptings you have, if you feel like reaching out to somebody, reach out. Because here's the thing. It's probably God. But even if it isn't, oh, boy, that was terrible. So my friend knows that I was thinking about her. Oh, my goodness. How it, I've totally blown it. I have missed God. <laughs> right? Like, even if it's not, they just know that you care about them. So that's the worst thing that can happen. So go ahead and work through that. Right? Hang out. Sorry, help them reach out to each other. So look for those. And I'm telling you that we will feel better about ourselves. Give, same principle there. Think on good things like we talked about. Go do fun things with good people. And by the way, like fun, legit things, right? Just saying. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Apply the scripture. Like I said, we got to apply that. Whenever you get a little tiny truth, apply that, and you will start seeing progress. It's kind of like, so when we were a pit and we just apply one little thing, we start making little stepping stones right? And we just reach over hand, Daddy, God, I'm trying. And he's like, I got you, girl, or I got you, boy, right? And he will bring you to the top. We just reach out. God, I need you. Help me. I'm going to try and step out in faith. You said to tithe this week, so I'm going to tithe. Daddy, God, I need you. You said to go talk to somebody. Daddy, God, I need you. You said to concentrate on work and to do the best that I can. Daddy, God, I need you. Struggling with, you know, road rage. Daddy, God, I need you. Like, whatever it is, he'll catch you, right? And then we also talked about that. My mom talked about it. I think we talked about it. But rest in God like a weaned child and take time to listen. Like, if we just stop and we just, like, cut off the noise, we have a noisy world. If we cut that off, God can speak. It gives him a chance. And focus on the rest. Or it was Bobby that said it. God speaks. Once you start listening, the floodgates are going to open. Can I just tell you? I have seen this over and over again. The moment you start trying to listen to God, all of a sudden he's flooding you. He's been speaking all along. We just weren't listening. So let's keep listening, right? And like a weaned child, I love this scripture. Um, but it says, instead I have calmed and quieted myself like a weaned child who no longer cries for its mother's milk. I nursed um, a couple of my kids, and can I just tell you that like, they would get desperate, right, when they're hungry. <laughs> like even a bottle fed baby, right? Like they get desperate. But when they're weaned and they're not on that anymore, they're, they, they're calm. They don't get all. So let yourself be calm like a weaned child instead of a desperate child. Because here's what happens. When we're so desperate and we're like, Ee! God's trying to speak, but we're like making all this noise and this com commotion that we can't even hear him. But when we calm ourselves, he it gives him the opportunity to like speak to us and hush, my child, I've got you. And he's already speaking it, but when we're like, we're not hearing him, <laughs> right? <laughs> Things not to do. Don't isolate. We already talked about that. Don't isolate yourself. Come to church. Go hang out with your friends. I know it feels terrible. Like when you are when you need rest, come to church. This, you need rest for your soul, not just rest for your body. If you need rest, do it another day. All right? Quit going. To, don't quit going to church. Listen. Okay, here's another thing not to do. Don't listen to sad and depressing music. If you are depressed, like what we want to do, like here, let me just give you a hint. Anything you want to do when you're sad and depressed, don't do. <laughs> because it's not going to work out well. So don't listen to sad and depressing music. That's what we do. We go, listen. Oh, I feel bad, so I'm going to go cry some more. Nah! Go listen to some happy music, and you might get through it, right? Now, if you like sad and depressing songs, do it when you're really happy, because then you can handle it. But when you're sad and depressed, turn off the radio or the playlist or whatever it is, right? Don't listen to sad and depressing music. Don't watch scary or, if like you're anxious, don't go watch a scary movie right? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're sad, don't go watch a weepy movie, right? Watch a happy, cheerful movie, right? 
Do whatever it is. Don't relapse into old bad habits. Don't relapse into addictions, right? Because here's the thing. When we don't have community, we tend to go find our community in bad things. Drugs, alcohol, sex, right? <laughs> and a few other things, right? Y'all get me, right? So don't go back into that because that's not going to bring life. Go find your real community because addictions are fake. Real community is real. And guess what? Your community is going to fail you. I'm going to tell you that right now. Our community is going to fail at times, but it's still what God is going to use. And in that, we grow as a community and we learn how to do it better, right? Don't lose hope because God is with us, like um, Josue said today, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, actually, boys, if you can come up. Um, don't be boasting about what you're going to do because I guarantee you, you will fail because <laughs> I've done it too. Like The second I'm like, I got this, I'm <laughs> right? flat down. Don't sabotage yourself because it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because the thing is, we start thinking negative thoughts, and then we make it happen. Because we're like, we're like, nobody likes me. And then we walk around like this. And then you get home, and you're like, nobody said hi to me today. And then everybody's like, they were, everybody else was like afraid. They're like, ooh, if I say hi, they're going to like punch me, right? right? And then, but we just made that happen in our life because of how we were behaving, right? So don't sabotage yourself, right? It just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And ending with, if it's pulling you away from God, it's not from God. If anything that you're doing and you're doing it to make yourself better and it's not drawing you to God, drop it. It's not from God. I don't care what it is, even if it looks good. All right? And, the, um, and here's what I'm going to just tell I'm not going to read the whole verse, but God has written you on the palm of his hand. Okay? When we think, like, God loves you so much, he has written. Have you ever, like, when you were, you know, in high school, well, not even high school, like, when you were a kid and somebody would write their little, you know, you would write names. I remember, you know. Alex and Martin, right? And you'd write it on your hand. Remember doing that as a kid? God's done that to you because he loves you, right? And in fact, some other scriptures, it says, I have carved your name. You ever seen a carving? Like, that doesn't come out, right? Another one is, I have inscribed a picture of you. God pictures you, right? And here's another one that says, I have tattooed your name upon your palm. God has tattooed. He loves you so much he's made a permanent tattoo of you on his hands. I don't know how his hands are big enough, but they are, right? And if you all stand with me, because God is transforming us even in the dark times. And when a butterfly starts off as a caterpillar, he goes through some dark things and he weaves a web and he gets dark and he's shuttered away and it looks like the thing is dead and then it starts to break open. And guess what? There's a struggle. But if, you give, if, the, if the butterfly gives up, he doesn't get to come out. If somebody helps the butterfly, guess what? It dies because it needs that to build its wings because every time we fight up against something, we are building our wings of faith. Okay? Every time we face a giant head on, we are building our wings of faith, and then God will bring us out a butterfly because he will bring it out. When everything looks dark, that is when he is brighter. When Satan thought he won, when he put Jesus in the grave, but he was doing his greatest work because he conquered sin and death. So when it looks the darkest, that's when we rise up in hope and we say, you know what? God is coming. Light is coming. Hope is coming. There is going to be a time. There is deliverance here. That is when the biggest things are happening. The biggest miracles started in a time of darkness. Let God transform the darkness that is within, the darkness that you've been fighting. Let God transform you. Let him wrap you in the cocoon of his love and let him transform you into a butterfly because God wants to deliver us. He wants to free us. Amen? So I throw up my hands I praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I have nothing else fit for the King, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. and say, Gaddy God, we are here. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. 
Let God speak to you. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. Let that lion soul. out. Because you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Lord, we praise you in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the darkness. We come praise you for what you're going to do. Oh, we glorify you, you. Lord, you are more powerful. Me. Lift up your song. Because you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Because you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So come on, my soul. Raise oh, your hands and you grab a hold of God. Me, let him touch you. Let him pull you up out of that miry pit. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. We worship you, Father. We praise for you, Lord. Oh. We worship you, Father. You. We praise for you in your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah, Lord. Father. Um, that there's some people in here that you're just, you don't think that you're, you're ready. You don't think that you're good enough to step out in faith like she was talking about. And um, that is part of the thoughts of condemnation and shame of our past that the enemy tries to keep us back from the word, the life, the purpose that God has given you. And so I wanted to share this word with you. Um, it's Second Corinthians 10, 5 and 6. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So you're called to be obedient obedience is stepping out in faith and right now I just want to pray for everybody I just want to pray that the spirit of condemnation is broken Amen. off of any person yes, the Jesus. lies of the enemy yes, are no longer yes, valid Jesus. yes Jesus's blood voided out those lies and I pray for every person to for the truth to re be revealed to you that you are worthy, you are valuable, yes, and it's in our weakness where we become strong because we rely on Christ. So step out. I call you to step out now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. So I throw up my hands and praise you oh, again you. and oh, again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know it's not much. I have nothing else fit for the king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, this is Daddy God. We worship you, Father. We lift our hands for you, God. All right, sing this one last time. So I throw up my hands and praise you again. 
again and again. Reach out and grab your daddy. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. Not no, it's not much. I'm nothing else fit for the king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you that you are our daddy God, Lord, and that you are here with us, that you have met us here today. Lord, thank you, God, for Sunday morning. Lord, thank you, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that that lion that is inside of our lungs, Lord, would roar all this week. Lord, that you would um, just break that those um, bonds of condemnation in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would help us to just grab a hold of our daddy. Lord, that you would just be with us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would transform us from the inside out, Lord, that we be a church full of butterflies. Lord, though we may have gone through hardship, we may have gone through darkness, Lord, but in the end, we are transformed into your image, and we are glorious butterflies for you, and we bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you, guys, and... Uh, as always, like we will be going to lunch afterwards. Please help yourself to some uh, refreshments. Please greet one another.